Hey there, this is Ruben from Dutch Round One. Thanks again for stopping by. Thanks for watching another episode. I appreciate the support and as always, I appreciate your time. Today I've got something new for you. Today we'll take a look at the differences between Dutch as spoken in the Netherlands and Dutch as spoken in Belgium, in the northern part of Belgium, in Flanders. We also call it Belgian Dutch or we call it Flemish. So how will we do that? Well, first of all, I'll give you a little introduction about the language itself. Afterwards, we will take a look at some pronunciation differences um, and we also take a look at some cultural differences. And then at the end, we'll take a look at some vocabulary differences. But before we do all that, remember to give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you want more content and let me know in the comments what you thought about this video. You can give me some feedback and also maybe write down some differences which you have noticed between Dutch spoken in the Netherlands and the Dutch spoken in Belgium. But without much further ado, let's go straight for the presentation. Okay, so there we go. First of all, before we speak about the differences, I just want to tell you that Flemish spoken in Belgium and then Dutch as spoken in the Netherlands is actually the same language, all right? The general noun is Dutch. It's only the Dutch which is spoken in Belgium, we call it Flemish. But Dutch is not only spoken in the Netherlands and in Belgium. It's also spoken in uh, Suriname, Aruba, Curaçao and Saint Maarten, all right? So as said, Flemish is spoken in the northern part of Belgium, all right? So it is the same language. Now what we're going to do is we'll take a look at some differences, pronunciation, cultural differences, and then we'll also take a look at vocabulary. But I do want you to remember that it is the same language. And when you learn Dutch in the Netherlands or when you learn Dutch in Belgium, you will be able to understand and communicate with people from the Netherlands, from Belgium and from the other um, countries. However, there is an important uh, difference regarding pronunciation. So here we go. So we'll start with the differences in the pronunciation. Now, the most common one is the G, the G. As you can see, my G is Flemish. I am from Belgium, so my G, the G is Flemish. It is not as strong. In the Netherlands, the G is a little bit stronger and is G. Okay, I exaggerate now a little bit, but I want you to hear the difference. And also, I want to say to you that it's not everywhere in the Netherlands that the G is so strong. If, for instance, you go to Brabant, you will find that the G is less strong. If you go to Lemberg, you will see that the G is not as strong. All right. So this is basically the first difference. Then we have the R, the R, the R. In Flanders, we tend to roll our R uh, a little bit more than in the Netherlands. You will find the R in the Netherlands a little bit more neutral. In Flanders, we roll it a little bit more. Okay, then we have the W. The W in Flanders is pronounced more like in water. W, W, W. You will hear that in the Netherlands, that W has a little bit of a V sound and it can be V, V. W and V. It's not a big difference. However, you'll notice it um, when um, you're in Belgium or when you're in the Netherlands. And then basically um, a suffix, the suffix T, T, I, E. All right. In Belgium, for instance, if I use the word administratie, is more pronounced as S, I, E. In the Netherlands, it will be more like C. For instance, administratie. Okay, so administratie in Belgium, administratie in the Netherlands. And then also the diphthongs. The diphthongs, as you remember, diphthongs are two letters, mostly vowels, which we put together and we pronounce as one. If we take, for instance, a look at double E. Now, in Belgium, we will say, for instance, the word no will be ne. In the Netherlands, it's a little bit more rounded and you will say nay. Okay, you hear the difference? Nay, nay. Um, another one is the double O. The double O as in boat. In Belgium, we will say boat. In the Netherlands, you'll say boat, boat. 
Okay? Another one could be the E and the U, the E. In Belgium we say leuk, in the Netherlands you will hear leuk. And many of these diphthongs are different, all right? And then another difference uh, pronunciation-wise is that Flemish is maybe a little bit more melodic, a little bit more connected, and Dutch is maybe a little bit more disconnected, or what they call in musical terms, more staccato. Now, what does that mean? Well, basically, in Flemish, words are more connected. You know, they basically, they, they're, it's like they're glued to each other a little bit more. Whereas in um, Dutch, each word has its own presence, and there's a small stop after each word in order to complete uh, the sentence. When you're in Belgium, when you're in the Netherlands, you'll hear that. Um, these are some differences. They're not all the differences in pronunciation, but let's say that the main difference between Flemish and between Dutch is the pronunciation. Okay, the second one, this is true for, for both countries and also for both uh, types of language. Uh, we love diminutives. We have a love affair with diminutives. Now, before I explain to you how we use the diminutives, I want to explain to you what an diminutive is. Well, basically, a diminutive is a suffix. Now, what is a suffix? It's basically some letters you paste at the end of the word. And in a diminutive case, it would be to make the word seem smaller. Now, the official ones in Dutch are je, tje, pje, utje, en kje. All right? So these are the official ones. Now, in the spoken language, in Flemish, but you can also see this in the Dutch in the Netherlands, is that there's some differences sometimes. There's a difference between what we call the standard language and then what we call in Belgium, in Flemish, the tussentaal. Tussentaal is like a mix between standard language and dialect. Now, why uh, am I showing you this slide is basically I have a lot of students who get quite confused, especially when they're in Belgium. Um, because they learn the rules of the diminutives and they see je, tje, pje, utje and kje, but then they see that in Belgium we use ke or ske. So where does that come from? Well, that is what we call tussentaal and we love it. So for instance, manneke uh, is a small boy uh, or boekske, which is a, a, small, uh, a small book. We use that all the time. In the Netherlands, um, sometimes they uh, stray from the standard language path also a little bit, although not as much as in Flanders, in my experience. And then uh, their more dialectic uh, suffix would be i, baki and yohi. But we love diminutives, all right? But yes, when you're in Flanders, you will hear a lot of ke and ske. In the Netherlands, it will be i.e. baki, for instance, and baki coffee of an yochi, so a small boy, um, these diminutives are quite present. Okay, then we'll take a look at some cultural differences. Now, the main two differences is basically that Belgian uh, society is more formal than uh, Dutch society. So we will use u, which is you, but in a formal way, um, as a personal pronoun, a lot more than in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, you will say way faster, je and jij. In Belgium, we tend to start off with u, and then when we have a better bond, when we, when we know the person better, uh, then we will start saying je and jij. So that is the first cultural difference, I would say. And then the second difference would be that Dutch people are known to be more direct. Um, and Flemish people, Belgian people are known to be a little bit more reserved. Now, both have their advantages and disadvantages. Uh, I think a great advantage when I go to the Netherlands, I think uh, the directness of Dutch people is always very clear. So you always know what to expect. In Belgium, um, sometimes it takes a little while uh, before you actually know uh, what somebody is trying to tell you, but that's just part of the cultural difference. So I said there are advantages, there are disadvantages. Okay, and then basically um, we have, I've spoken about it already, uh, small dialectic um, differences, especially um, in Flemish. Now, uh, when you're in Flanders, so for instance, you were in the Netherlands, you've studied Dutch there, you have learned the personal pronouns je and jij, 
you want to start talking with the people and then suddenly they start responding you with he and hey and you're like what is this country where i am i how are these people speaking is it really the same language yes it is the same language he and hey is not part of standard language it is what we call tussental again this mixture between dialect and standard uh language in dutch he and hey is uh, not used or it's considered very uh, old fashioned in flemish we use it quite a lot now as you see the example he of hey zet te laat now basically if you see that after two or three or four years of studying dutch you say that is that i don't know that verb i don't know that personal pronoun what is going on here that is um um an example of of dialects and that actually means je bent te laat now i'll give you a golden tip don't worry about the dialects the tussental because everybody in flanders will understand the general standard dutch it's just basically why do people speak a tussental well they've grown up with it and it sounds a little it sounds less formal it sounds more informal it's more connecting it's warmer as a language maybe also i found with my students that when they were watching uh belgian um television series uh and they've studied their dutch in the netherlands they don't really understand a lot because what is used in those belgian television series is tussental but don't worry too much about that with standard dutch uh language you will be understood everywhere uh in um belgium okay so that is ge and gij as we've spoken about the diminutives ke ske uh we use those one a lot uh, these ones a lot i don't want to get in too much into the dialects because some dialects they stray very far from the standard dutch language but um yeah these are some differences especially in flanders we like our uh, tussental we like our dialect Okay and then we come to the different words the different words in Flemish and the different words in Dutch so we'll go over the lists uh we'll take a look at them all of the words i will pronounce with a flemish accent that is my accent um if you want to hear them with a dutch accent ask uh maybe a dutch person to read them out loud for you now in flemish we speak about frieten or frietjes in the netherlands you will hear patat A GSM is a mobile phone in Flanders. A mobieltje is a mobile phone in the Netherlands. The fitness is the gym in Flanders. That would be the sportschool in the Netherlands. Pistole uh, would be a bread bun if you go to the bakers, um, and that would be in the Netherlands. That would be a bolletje. Uh, een pintje, dat is if you go to a bar and you want to have a, a beer, we say een pintje. And in the Netherlands that would be pelsje or biertje. Kleetje, that would be a dress. Uh, in the Netherlands people use jurk. Appelsien, sinaas appel, both of them mean orange. Hoesting uh, is a very nice Flemish word, I like that word a lot. Or zin, lust. In um, Dutch is you will use that word if you feel like doing something. Um, uh, it's like I have a craving for, I have lust for, maybe not, but um, you catch my my drift. Then you have muizenstrontjes or hagelslag. Uh, muizenstrontjes and hagelslag or the sprinklet, small pieces of sprinklet, uh, sprinkled chocolate you get, uh, you can put on your bread. Rondpunt and uh, rotonde, uh, both of them mean a roundabout. Mannekes of jongens is like boys. Mannekes, jongens. Ajain of ei, that would be an onion. Uh, lavabo of a wastafel uh, is a sink. Um, and then a croque monsieur or a toasty. A croque monsieur would be a toast. Croque monsieur is a toast um, with warm cheese and ham. Between uh, the bread slices, tosti would be uh, the name in Dutch in the Netherlands. All right, and then we have uh, amai or jeetje. That is when uh, that is basically an expression um, when we are we were surprised by something or when we are impressed with something. Uh, Snot valling or een verkoudheid. Both of them mean a cold. Then we have gazet in Flemish. A krant in Dutch that would be a news 
paper, uh, een dikke nek hebben of praatjes hebben. That would be somebody who's very impressed with himself and who's not very humble. Bankkaart of een pinpas, that would be a bankkaart. Solden of koopjes, uh, that would be um, when there sales. Plezant en plezierig, that would be pleasant, fun. Stoep en voetpad, that would be the sidewalk or the boardwalk. Uh, ambetant or vervelend, that would be annoying. And then this one is zeker en vast en vast en zeker. So exactly the same words, we just pronounce them uh, or we just place them in a different order. That would be certainly. Verschieten en, or schrikken, that would be to be startled. Uh, to and dicht, for instance, the winkel is to, of the winkel is dicht, the store is closed. Lopen is to run in Flemish, hardlopen is to run in Dutch. And then the autostrade of the autosnelweg, both of them are the motorway or the highway. Right, so these were some different words in Flemish and in Dutch. Now, now we come to the end of the differences between Flemish and Dutch. I know there are more differences, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of an uh, introduction to some differences between Flemish and Dutch. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got some value out of it. I hope I made some things clearer for you. And also let me know in the comments if you have more differences, if you feel that there's more differences pronunciation wise, vocabulary wise, culturally. Let me know. I'm always curious to find out. Give it a like uh, and also subscribe to the channel if you want more content. As for me, I want to thank you again for watching. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your support. And keep it 100 and stay tuned for another episode of Dutch Round 1.